Welcome to Tennis Spin, where we put our spin on your tennis. Guys, have you ever heard of the 80-20 principle? It was invented by a guy named Pareto, and it's called the Pareto Principle. How does the 80-20 principle relate to your tennis? Well, I'm going to tell you today. Stay tuned. Okay, so what is the 80-20 Pareto principle? So, a guy named Pareto, okay, basically said that 20% of actions, right, will, will effect, effect. 80% of the outcomes. So, so that's why it's called an 80-20 principle. Now, let me give you an example of what I'm talking about and how it, it may pertain to tennis. Okay? Now, everybody, everybody complains about rackets and shoes every year. Have you guys ever thought about that? Like, I'm sure you're in the majority that you're like, why did they change my ASIC shoes? I loved that old pair. Okay? Well, 20% of the population affected that shoe that made you not like it. But what am I talking about? What am I talking about? Okay. So think about it this way. If ASICS comes out with a new shoe, let's say Gel Resolution 7, okay? Now, it's, it's going to be a given that 80% of the people will probably like that shoe. It's going to be a given that 20% will complain about that shoe and not like it, okay? So those 20% are going to be like, I like that Gel Resolution 6 way better. Why did they change it? Right? So they're the ones that probably wrote in the ASICs and complained and said, it needs to be wider. It needs to be lighter. It needs to breathe better. It needs to be more stable. So ASICs takes those suggestions and basically makes them and refines them for the next generation. Therefore, you have a gel resolution 7 that now doesn't fit probably a different 20% of the population. But 20% of the previous population generated this. Does that make sense to you? So it's always 20% that causes 80%, well, in this case, to like it, and another 20% to not like it. So there will be never, well, I don't want to say never, never, but sometimes, rarely does it happen that you appease everybody, but that's usually not the case. You're going to always have like eight people like it, two people not. And that would be like best case scenario, right? Because there's obviously other situations where it's the opposite. You got two people like it and eight people hate it. Okay, so that's what I'm saying. Now, think of it, think of this in a different way too. Think of it in a different way. It also happens to tennis rackets, right? As you see with all the pure drive generations, the aero generations, they've taken your suggestions and have refined the racket, have in, in their mind made it better for you, but did it, but did they? right? I'll bet you in one of those 10 generations that you didn't like one, two, or three of those versions if you used every single one along the way, right? I mean, I know that I like the latest pure drive and the original pure drive, right? In the 10 generations, I liked two. Did I like the ones in the middle? Mm, 
you know, but, but I'm in the minority and not the majority because that's not my racket. Okay. So now think, think of it. I want you guys to think of it in this way too. In a tennis shop, just like this one. Okay. My sales. Okay. 80% of my total sales comes from 20% of my customers. Right? I'm going to give you a second to think about that. Okay? 80% of my sales comes from 20% of my customers. So, those 20% are the diehards. They're the league players. They're the string breakers. They're my high school kids that come in every other week. They're the guys that burn out shoes every month. Right? Does that make sense? If you look at it in that way, it does. And when I, when I thought about the principle, I was like, that makes total sense. Because those 20% of people that walk in here, I know their names, right? I may know their families. I may know their whole family's names. So that's, you know, that's where the principle kind of comes into play in retail. Okay, I think most of retail is like that because you will go to the stores that you like and know and spend most of your money there. You know, whereas in some of the other places, you just go once in a blue moon when you really need something or can't find something somewhere else. Okay, so 20% of the people affect 80% of everything else. Okay. Now, think, think of it this way too. Think of it this way too. In the last, I want to say, 20 years, especially on the men's side, especially on the men's side, 20% of the Grand Slam winners on the men's side, right? 20% won 80% of the time. I know that's real close on the men's side. Women's side, probably not so close, except when Serena was dominating through her 10 years. But um, think about it that way. And I know this one is true. I know this one is true. 20% of winners from every single tennis tournament has won 80% of the prize money. Right? Think of it that way. Think of it that way. The small group of the top tennis players won the most prize money. Because usually the ones that are at the top gobble up all the cash. Right? Now, I want you to listen to this one real carefully. Okay? Real carefully. When you're playing tennis and you're hitting a rally ball, okay? You should be going down the middle, cross court, 80% of the time. Less risky. Net is six inches shorter. Think about it that way. When it's ready, when you're ready to pull the trigger, right, you go for that riskier shot. Down the line, six inches taller. Does that make sense? Cut through the middle, cut through the middle. When it's time to pull the trigger, down the line. Riskier, right? You'll win more points with less unforced errors if you do this. Okay? Does that make sense? How does that affect your tennis? How, do that, how does that affect your thought process? All right, if you're one of those guys that work out for your tennis, like in the gym, okay? 20% of that workout, 20% of that workout will affect 80% of your play. Think of it that way, okay? Work out hard, focused though. Work out those micro muscles and it will affect 80% of your efforts, your speed, your legs your endurance out there. So give it a good 20% at least. 
extra, okay? Focus that 20% in the gym, okay? I know everybody wants to just sit there and watch TV and check their phone and everything and think they're getting a workout, okay? Give it a good 20%. Like, give it a good 20%, like 20% of the time. What does that mean? Give it a good 20 minutes at least if you're in there for an hour, okay? It'll affect 80% of your tennis if you do it right, okay? Now, here's a funny one. Have, here's a funny one. Have, have you ever driven by a construction site and um, you see like, like three people having coffee doing this deal, right? You see the little dude digging, right? 20% of the people do the work while 80% of the people watch them. You ever seen that? So 20% of the people do the work while 80% of the people watch. Does that make sense? I bet you you won't pass another construction site the same again. Thank you for watching Tennis Spin, where we put our spin on your tennis.